Once a vintage car drops off the radar, we may not see or hear of it until the property it's stored on goes up for sale. These days, we use the term barn find to describe any found automotive treasure that's been hidden away for a long time. But it doesn't have to be stuffed into a literal barn to be a barn find car or truck. There are also farm finds, which can be in a pasture or in a barn. Sometimes the vehicle is stored correctly, up on blocks and in a dry storage area, but many vehicles aren't so lucky. If a vehicle is stored in a closed up and damp environment, it can be worse than if the vehicle was stored outside since the moisture can never really dry out. So, especially in drier areas of the country, a car stored outside might be in better shape than one improperly stored indoors. Unfortunately, tragedy plays a big role in authentic barn find cars. For a car to become forgotten, someone's lifelong plan has likely been derailed. A death in the family, physical accident, career change, or even an abandoned project due to loss of interest all tends to move a once-loved car into obscurity. Another, barn find, that people forget about are stalled projects at body shops where the owner ran out of cash, passion, or both. You're most likely looking for a person, just like you, except older. Someone who would have had enough disposable income to buy a rare or vintage car when it was new, or nearly new, and then either got too busy or money got too tight to use the car as intended. Rather than allow the car to be damaged or stolen while it wasn't in use, the owners of future barn find cars stash them away for what they think will be months to years, certainly not years to decades. This unintended cold storage means many of the authentic barn finds you'll stumble across will have been driven or towed to their final resting place with almost no preparation for their hibernation. Lodera Ehrlich added, even if you find your dream car hidden away somewhere, there's still the problem that, if the owner's reason for putting it there is still valid to them, the car won't be for sale. Almost as exciting as the find is when the owner admits they may think about selling something. This process can take time, so make an offer and check back every so often so see if they are starting to reconsider moving on. Another question that always comes up with barn finds is why, after all these years of saving something, did the owner decide to let go and sell? The reasons are just as wide and varied as why the car was put into storage in the first place. There are many factors but getting older is the most common one. Even though someone had good intentions when they put the car away, they have come to realize that they can't physically do the work they had planned and sometimes they have just lost the passion to finish, or even start, the project. Barn finds are not confined to the agricultural structures from which they get their name. The key is to look in locations that are large enough to absorb a car, on properties that haven't changed hands in decades, in an area that other car guys used to go but don't anymore. Today that could mean old warehouses, storage lots, the top or bottom floor of parking garages, retirement communities, or even some private airplane hangars, and, of course, out in a dirty field someplace. Also keep in mind that certain geographic regions will be more target-rich than others. Consider looking within a 20-mile radius of an old drag strip, racetrack, military base, automotive assembly plant, or defunct mill. Certain people have jobs or routines that allow them access to view cars stored in backyards, secluded garages, or on seldom-traveled roads. Don't have one of those jobs. Ask mail carriers, meter readers, contractors, line workers, real estate agents, insurance adjusters, and police officers who are all likely to stumble on hidden cars during their daily routines. Also consider asking auto parts store workers, local mechanics, and body shop workers if they know of somebody who used to come in all the time with a insert vintage car here. Google Maps satellite view can also be your friend. An abandoned Impala and AF100 truck were recently found on an old unused homestead because the person working the fields knew someone in the barn find business. Searching Craigslist for the words barn find typically returns listings of overpriced iron being offered by online marketers, not legit deals on desirable cars. There are still search terms you can use to weed through the noise to get to the undiscovered stuff. We like using grandfather, grandmother, not sure, lost storage, don't know, mystery, or our favorite vintage speed part names. We found a 1955 Pontiac by searching for Hillborn. 
be creative, and who knows what you'll find. We even know a person who found a sweet survivor Camaro by searching with the term Camaro. No joke. When dealing with a seller of one of these barn finds, remember to be kind, patient, and polite. This was either once their passion or the passion of loved one. For this, we went to Chad Ehrlich again. His job, and passion, is seeking out dusty and vintage barn finds all over the country, so he's been down this road more than a few times. Given that every state, and even the counties within that state have different rules, there's no easy answer here. As Ehrlich told us, I could tell you how Kansas does it, but that won't help you anywhere else since each location will have its own set of rules. Kansas is fairly easy, but some locations are nightmares, so the best thing to do is check with your local department of motor vehicles and find out what they require and if a bill of sale will work or if they require the actual title. It might be more than a little bit of legwork for you to title your find, but that's part of the challenge. That's like asking how long a piece of string is. The answer to this question has to factor in the condition of the find, it varies greatly, and how much money you have to spend. Don't get so excited about your barn find that you take on a project that's bigger than your budget or comfort level. In some cases, your barn find will have aged enough to have just the right amount of patina and will require only minimal work to get back on the road. In other cases, you might find that your treasure is more in the parts car category. We have to preface this section by saying we are gearheads here and not lawyers. But, in an overall sense, barn finds are legal. They are just cars that are no longer on the road and have been nearly forgotten about. States like California will keep charging registration fees on a car unless the owner filed no op paperwork. This can be an expensive surprise to the buyer when they go to register their new find. So ask questions and do your homework. Also, when buying a car with no paperwork, such as when you buy it on a bill of sale, there's always a risk that it was reported stolen in the past. As you can imagine, this could cause a whole slew of headaches as you sort it out. Most of the time, though, you'll find that barn finds, along with field, shed, garage, and all the other finds, are going to be fairly painless, and the owners will mostly likely, but not always, have the title information. Study the laws of your state and county, ask questions of the seller, and trust that little voice in the back of your head if things seem a bit too good to be true. We've always started our cars up every few weeks to keep the batteries charged, but thanks to technology, even that's not required anymore. Battery tenders allow us to reduce our interaction with stored cars, good thing, to the point we can go months without even looking at him, bad thing. You can be sure barn finds of the future will be discovered hooked up to some kind of umbilical cord attempting to keep an ancient battery charged. Because the tenders allow the owner to ignore their hidden away treasure even more, one could argue that they help create future barn finds.